Good morning. Welcome to our service here in Glendermott today. And if you're visiting with us, we bid you a very special welcome. And we're delighted to have those joining us by live stream, YouTube, CD and DVD. We're also delighted today to have Gary Ming and David Davis from the Royal British Legion today to perform the laying down of a standard, is it? We've had this standard in our possession for a wee while, but officially it needs to be laid down by the Londonderry branch of the British Legion, so that official capacity is happening today, so it, from now on it will be completely our possession, rather than just temporarily our possession. So it's, it's great to have it, and it's great to have you boys with us for to perform that for us. Food shares available in the hall, so anybody can make use of anything It's there in the hall. Tea and coffee also in the hall after the service. Any of our, not many children out today, but any children have birthday in the last week or so? No? No birthdays? Will said to me last week, since I started this birthday box, less people want to come up and see me. <laughs> I, think, I think you're right, Wolves, to be honest with you. I'm not that scary, you know, it's just a matter of coming up and taking someone out of the box, but we'll get, we'll get everybody's a birthday once a year. Our pound jar is, last month was £250, so that was a great effort again. If I just refer you to the sheet, the back of the sheet, there's a lot of organisations that are now closed up, uh, but Mother and Toddlers is back again, the Curling Club's back again this week, and our midweek Bible study and prayer time started, and we're actually starting a new series in Bible study this week, so if you've maybe it's been a while since you've been there and sort of lost track of the last series or maybe you've never been before, come along at 7 o'clock on Wednesday night and I say it's very informal and it'll be, uh, you'll be made very welcome. The youth club is on uh, Friday night and then Sunday school's back again next week. Our Smiles Foundation container, uh, no Sunday school next week. They're taking another week off. Money the same. So it's not so bad, as long as that keeps going. So a new Sunday school from the 14th, so it'll be the 21st before Sunday school starts back again. The Smiles Foundation container for Romania is, is going out on the 18th, so next Sunday will be the last Sunday to drop anything into the office. I know there was stuff lifted through the week out of the office and taken away for safekeeping, but there's uh, another opportunity next Sunday to bring something if you haven't yet done so. Derry and Donegal PW link are meeting there on the 16th at half past three. So speak to Valerie about that if you're intending to go to that. Mission in Ireland evening in Rye Presbyterian Church is on Sunday the 14th, so it's next Sunday at half past six. And the safeguarding training, again, very important that those who haven't had their safeguarding training within the last three years, speak to Avril Hyman, because there's an opportunity in Everington Presbyterian Church this Tuesday night at a half past seven. So I think that's all the announcements I have. Yeah, that's all the announcements, so thank you very much. Well, good morning. Good morning. It is good uh, to be back and worship once again uh, together as God's people here in Glendermott. As George says, it's good to have you all with us, whether you're here, well, my little saying, every week, the odd week, or you're visiting with us, it's good to have you with us, and we do trust you will know something uh, of God's presence uh, and God's peace as we meet uh, here to, to worship him. Just a little note on the, well, we might be thinking a little bit more about uh, the midweek prayer meeting uh, when we come to, to our talk today, but uh, as another little plug, um, this is the study we'll, we will be beginning. Well, we'll be meeting together this week uh, as we do sometimes, just to meet together, to worship, uh, as a, and then have a little introduction to the study. Uh, and then from then on in, we'll break into our little groups. But can I commend this, this to you? Um, it's Experiencing God, it's called. So it's, it's six little individual studies talking about experiencing love, peace, joy, passion, uh, and rest, and, and so on. Um, just to see us through to the end of the year. So uh, can I encourage you, which I will do later on. It's not a might or a maybe. I will be encouraging you to come along. Uh, to the Wednesday night to take time uh, to, to, to pray together and to study God's Word together. There are some copies of this over uh, in the office, so when you go over for your cup of tea or your food share, uh, please pick one up. If there's not enough there, please tell me and I'll get some more sorted out. But that's what we'll be beginning um, 
to look at from this Wednesday on to take us through uh, to the summer time. But say, we'll maybe say more about it uh, later on. But it is good we are here to worship God, as we say, our primary purpose in all of it. Um, is to worship God. We're going to sing, we're going to pray, um, and it's all directed at him. And yes, even our laying up of the old standard is an act of worship uh, as well. And to lead us in to our first piece of worship, we're going to stand and sing in a moment or two together uh, our hymn, um, Behold Our God, uh, which is based on some verses uh, from uh, the prophet Isaiah. And the Isaiah, Isaiah says this, he says, Who has measured the waters in the hall of his hand? Or with the breadth of his hand marked out the heavens? Who has held the dust of the earth in a basket? Or weighed the mountains of the scales and the hills in a balance? Who can fathom the spirit of God or instruct the Lord as his counselor? Whom did the Lord consult to enlighten him? And who taught him the right way? Who was it that taught him knowledge or showed him the path of understanding? Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. This hymn is focused totally on God, directing our thoughts to God. What a way to start our service of worship. Let's stand together and sing, Who has held the ocean in his hands? Let's worship God together. just uh, take a moment let's still ourselves and come to God in prayer let's let's pray together father as always as we still ourselves in this meeting house this morning as we gather together as your people here surely we do come well as always with that sense of awe and wonder as we behold you are God, as we recognize who you are and what you have done for us. Father, we thank you that you are that almighty God who knows all things, who directs all things, and who has created all things and who sustains us through this life. Lord, we are amazed at your mighty power. And Father, even as we think of 
who you are and how mighty and powerful you are. We thank you that you are that personal God. We thank you for your love, your grace and your mercy to each and every one of us, showing clearly, well, as we stand in the shadow of that cross of Easter, where your love was clearly displayed for us, if you sang about those nail-pierced hands, Lord, surely our hearts yearn to know more of you, to love you more, to worship you more, or just to, to rest in your presence here today. Yet even as we say all those things, we recognize as we so often do how far short we fall. Yes, it's very easy for us as we stand in your meeting house here, as we sing our songs of worship, as we read your word, to, well, to bask in your glory. It's very easy to do that. Yet when we go out into the world, Lord, we know sometimes, well, we leave you behind in the meeting house. We forget all about you until next Sunday. We do and we say things we know we shouldn't do and we don't do things we know we should. But Lord, we know you've called us to be that image of Christ in the community around us and all the different places you've called us to be. So forgive us, Father, for those times when we have failed you. And those times we, yeah, when we haven't done what we know we should have done. When we haven't shone so brightly for you and taken those opportunities that you've given us to speak of Jesus. But we thank you that you are that forgiving God. Lord, we know that in spite of our failure, you do still forgive us. You do still love us. You still want us to serve you each and every day. So we just pray that we would know and we would sense your spirit working in us, helping us and guiding us, directing us in our day-to-day -day lives. Lord, but we pray for our day-to-day -day lives. We pray for here now as we meet together. We pray that we would sense your Spirit moving amongst us, speaking to us, changing us, molding us, shaping us to go out and do the task that you've called us to do, to be your people in this world. So will you bless this time of worship that we spend together. Use it, Father, to enthuse us, to empower us, and send us out ready to shine for you and to shine for Jesus and the community around us. So be with us now, we pray, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to turn to God's Word uh, together now. I know over this past few weeks, because of Palm Sunday and Easter, we have taken a little break for a couple of weeks from our study in the book of Acts, but we're going to turn back to that uh, today again, and we're going to read from Acts chapter 4, uh, verses 23 uh, to 35. It's found on page 1094 of the Pew Bible, if you'd like to lift one and read it with me, and also coming up on your screen. But it's great, as I always say, to have God's Word in our hands and to read it so freely uh, together. So a little section down in the left-hand corner of page 1096, the believer's prayer. Let's read God's word uh, together. On their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said to them. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. Sovereign Lord, they said, you made the heaven and the earth and the sea and everything in them. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servant, our father David. Why do nations rage? The peoples plot in vain. The kings of the earth take their stand and the rulers gather together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in this city to conspire against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed. They did what your power and will had decided beforehand would happen. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform miraculous signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. 
All the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and much grace was upon them. There were no needy persons among them, for from time to time those who owned land or houses sold them, brought the money from the sales and put it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to anyone as he had need. We'll end our reading there at verse 35, and we'll continue that in the weeks ahead. As George said, it's good to have Gary and David with us today from the, the London Dairy branch of the Royal British Legion um, to do with the laying up of the standard. So I'm going to say no more. I'm going to hand over um, to David, who's going to come uh, and explain a little about what we're doing and, and why we're, we're doing it. First of all, I'd like to thank the Minister and the members of Clendermont Church for permitting us to be with you this morning. I can assure you it's our delight that we are here to help with this ceremony. It comes about through a sad situation where the London Dairy Branch in its centenary year found itself with a very inoperative number of membership we were actually down to six members in total to try and carry on the work of the Royal British Legion and to carry out the business as such. Some of us felt, uh, who were left, that we needed to uh, face the challenge of having to close. Our membership actually dwindled right down due to uh, demographic trends. Uh, age, illness, and bereavement. And what was going out at the top, there was nothing coming on the bottom. So we had took the sad decision to close the branch. In complying with the Royal Charter, Charter, we were very fortunate to have two standards, uh, a new standard and the one that's here present. The new standard is currently officially laid up in St. Collins Cathedral, and that signifies the closure of the branch and of the books and the record. Due to various conversations between uh, one or two people, uh, we had presented the standard as a gift to Glendermott uh, for use on occasions. And we were asked and reminded that uh, could this be made official? And that's what we intended to do today. And it was our pleasure to follow that through. The negotiations, and I'm very sorry to have to name somebody but, or others, but um, Mr. Herbie Guthrie was probably the instigator of this, who requested from my Vice Chairman, Mr. Gary Ming, if we had any items of mobilia that could be displayed to enhance your own Remembrance Sunday uh, Act. And there were no hesitation about the second standard come into play. And that, again, as I say, is why you have it. So without further ado, I would wish to proceed with the Act of Remembrance. <coughs> Thank you. 
They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not wear them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. When you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow, we gave our today. Will we stand here along the very branch of Royal season to your care for now and evermore? I accept the charge. May the souls of the faithful departed rest in peace. We're going to uh, worship God together now again uh, in our next hymn, uh, Abide With Me, Fast Falls the Eventide. Let's worship God. <coughs>
congregation, please take a seat. It is good to be have been part of this today. Uh, I think just as I was singing there, even and thoughts going through my head so much uh, in these days because of age and, and so on, and um, well, let's call it airbrushing of history. I think it's good uh, that we keep our remembrance alive. Remember uh, is a biblical word. Uh, it's throughout Scripture to remind us to remember, and we should never uh, forget uh, the sacrifice that these flags, these standards, it's not a flag, it's a standard that these standards represent and the men behind that. Let me just pray uh, as we close this part of our service. Father, we do thank you for the, the sacrifice and the service of each person represented uh, under this standard. Lord, we thank you for the, the Royal British Legion who continue to work with those who have served, those who carry the scars of war, and those who carry in their memories or the sacrifice of their friends and colleagues or for the freedom of this world. Lord, we recognize there is still much going on in our world. There are so many wars here, there, and everywhere. So many lives sacrificed for the cause of freedom. Lord, we just pray for those who find themselves in those areas of conflict in these days. Lord, we pray that they would know your help and your power guiding them and helping them, Lord, as they seek to bring peace to your world. But in all things, Lord, we know your word tells us to look to the Prince of Peace, to Jesus. Lord, we pray each would do that too, that they might know true peace, peace in their hearts, peace with you, the Almighty God. So, Father, we commit this time to you, this standard to the care of this church forevermore, and we pray, Lord, that it would be used to remember and to never forget. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to continue worshiping God now uh, as our offering is brought. So your morning offering will now be received. Let's pray together. Father, as we always recognize it is good to come and acknowledge your goodness, your grace and your mercy to us. We thank you for each and every blessing we enjoy in this life. And we thank you for all the material things that we enjoy, that we recognize come from your hand. We thank you for this opportunity to give back something of what you have given us and to use it for your good and for your glory. Lord, we just pray that you would bless this offering. Use it and use us, that others may come to know you as their Father in heaven and Jesus as their Saviour and Lord. We pray in Jesus' name. 
Amen. good as we often do just to be able to pause in the midst of our service and to think of other people we all know someone within our own families within our circle of friends and certainly within our family here uh, in Glendermott uh, we all know folk who need our prayers who need God's help at this particular time and as I always say as we pause in our service as we still ourselves and God brings these things to your mind these people and situations to your mind, uh, please bring them to God in prayer. Let's, let's pray together. <clears throat> Father, it is good just to have that opportunity. In fact, your word commands us to, to still ourselves, to unite our hearts and our minds, and to come to you in prayer. And Lord, what an amazing opportunity it is just to bring those different people in those different situations, Lord, that each of us know of, to you. We recognize at the start of this service that, Lord, everything is under your control. You are that almighty, sovereign God. You know those situations better than we do. Lord, surely that gives us some sense of confidence and, and hope Lord, to know that you know our troubles and you're there for us. And so we pray for those, yes, who you have brought to our minds, who we know who are, who are sick, whether they're in hospital, whether they're sick at home, whether they're struggling with life in general. We all know, each and every one of us, or struggle with so many things. Well, with the reality of life, whether that be physical illness, whether it's emotional pain, dealing with bereavement and illness of others, so many struggling with mental illness at the minute, and yes, certainly in our world today, there seems to be so like a struggle materially. But Lord, whatever the situation is that each one finds himself in, we pray as we have done, from the outset of this service, that they would seek you, that they would know you, and that they would know your help and peace in their hearts as they travel that rough and rocky path of life. Lord, we thank you for your family here that you've placed each of us in. We thank you for those opportunities to pray for each other, to come alongside each other, to reach out to those who need your help. Lord, just to bring your words of comfort and help into those difficult situations. We thank you too uh, for the opportunities that you give us to reach out to others with the good news of Jesus. To recognize as we stand in the shadow of Easter, as we stand in the shadow of that cross where Jesus gave us all for us. Lord, surely it does enthuse us to grasp those opportunities. Or whether that be as we come alongside people who, who need your help as they struggle, whether it's just in conversations with others, or we pray you just use us to share your love, your goodness, your grace, and your mercy to each and every one of us. As we thank you for our fellowship, or we pray for well, growth within your fellowship here, not necessarily numerically, but spiritually and in unity together. And Lord, in those things, Lord, as we focus on you and focus on your word, Lord, surely that will, will draw others here. We thank you for that sense of friendship that we have here, that sense of family that we enjoy together. And we pray that even that would impact those outside our walls. But Lord, we just thank you 
for who you are and what you've done for us. And Lord, we know that whatever that troubling situation is, you're more than willing to walk alongside us through that. So be with each of us. Be with those who need your hand at this time. We commit ourselves and them to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As we prepare to turn to God's word uh, together, now we're going to stand and sing our next piece of praise. And that's how deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure. As we pray to God and thank them for his goodness, surely this refocuses our minds as we turn to his word. Let's stand and let's worship God together. just pray for a second as we come to God's word. Father, we thank you for your word to us. And Lord, as we turn to our, our talk now, that is our simple prayer that we would hear your word speaking to us. Lord, so speak to each one of us. Let us hear your voice and your voice alone. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In uh, our last study of Acts just before Easter, uh, we saw how Peter and John took uh, that opportunity uh, that God had given them to spread the good news of the gospel to uh, the religious leaders uh, in Jerusalem. We talked about the extraordinary power and presence that they had uh, to speak and to preach uh, about Jesus. And now what, what follows here, I think, should help us to, to understand where and how these early believers got that power. Remember something that was uh, said at a ruling elders fellowship I was at one time, uh, and we were talking, uh, as we often find ourselves doing, about the state of our world and, and of the church in, in these days, and well, maybe even what seemed like a lack of the movement of the Spirit of God 
in our land and in our churches in these days. And the simple statement made at that time was this. The disciples got because the disciples asked. The disciples got because the disciples asked. And of course, that is a statement that directly challenges each of us in our prayer life. It challenges us about how often we actually find ourselves in that privileged place where we can speak freely with the, the Almighty God. And then, of course, what we actually say when we do take that time to pray. And that's exactly where we find ourselves here in this next section of Acts. Most of our Bibles have the, the title for this section, as I said it when we read it, The Believer's Prayer. So that should give us a bit of a hint about where we're going with this today, shouldn't it? It's clear here that Luke wants us to see the connection between prayer, between the, the amazing power the disciples had, and this powerful movement of the Holy Spirit in those early days. He tells us that when they prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken. Have you heard that before? You might hope that would remind you of another incident that happened a little while back in our story on the day of Pentecost, where we hear those almost exact words, the place where they were was shaken. Both incidents involve the powerful shaking of the building as the Holy Spirit makes His presence known. And yes, where large number of people come to faith in Jesus. And what was happening on both those occasions? What's the thing that links both of those things? Well, on both occasions, the disciples are praying. It's clear here that the Spirit of God moves when God's people pray. Yes, the priority in preaching for the disciples was getting the message clear, but now we see what I would say is the priority in the life of every single person in God's family. The priority of prayer as they face the difficulties and the persecution for, for preaching about Jesus, and when they felt weak and powerless uh, and their own lack of ability, what's the first thing they do? They pray. And it was more than just one little characteristic in their walk with God. This was their top priority. In the story preceding this section that we looked at before Easter, Peter and John have spent the night in prison. They've been questioned by the authorities and because, well, we said the authorities hadn't a clue what to do with them. They released them, threatened them with the consequences if they continue to tell people about Jesus. Don't be doing that again. And of course, what's the first thing they do? Well, it actually isn't to go out and do the complete opposite of what they've been told. They don't just go out and preach some more. They go and they meet up with the rest of the believers first and pray and then go out. They meet up with the rest of God's family. That is a little bit of an aside here. I think it's interesting that the, the Greek word that well, that we have translated as their own here, huidos, is better translated as friends. It's not just their own people. I think that gives us a, a better sense of what should be at the heart of, of any fellowship of God's people. Folks, we're not just some random group of people. We're, we're more than just a, a group of our own kind. We're supposed to be Guidos. We're supposed to be friends. Friends who have uh, the kind of relationship with each other that, well, yes, like this, at the drop of a hat, we will pray for and with each other when we need help or, or encouragement. 
Does that not give us that sense, that real sense of, of closeness, of, of oneness, and, and of unity? And that early church, that's, well, it is a great model for us in God's church today. So they go to their friends first. They tell them everything that's happened with the chief priests and elders and so on. And after hearing what Peter and John had to say, Luke simply says, they lifted their voices together to God. They lifted their voices together to God. The priority when they realize the opposition is rising is to turn to God for help and strength. This is the top priority of every believer. And Martin Lloyd-Jones was talking about this incident. He says that it, it shows that prayer should be the chief characteristic of a true Christian. He says the ultimate test of your profession of faith is your prayer life. And that's a challenge in itself, isn't it? So there's a challenge to our priority in prayer. And you know what I'm going to say, don't you? Yes, we need to be consistent in our own personal prayer. That's a given, as they say. But the pattern here, the biblical pattern, is to come together with our friends to pray together. Now I know we're nearly in the summer months, and yes, we'll be taking a break from our weekly Bible study and prayer time. But for the next sort of eight weeks until we hit that, and for the rest of the year, the opportunity is there to meet and to pray together. No pressure. But why not come along and answer this biblical call and lift your voice to God with your friends and your family here in Glendermott? And I know some of you will have heard this before because I've said it before. I know it was said in First Derry uh, on Good Friday evening, and I'm going to say it again. That little saying about the attendance at churches and Bible study and so on. Some of you will know where I'm going with this. They say that the amount of people on a Sunday morning will tell you what they think of the church. And that's church in the traditional Northern Ireland sense, the bricks and mortar in the building. We love our buildings. I think I quoted... Uh, the presbytery mission plan once uh, here where we talked about the idolatry of our church buildings in this presbytery was shocking. We love our building and we love coming out to worship in our building on a Sunday morning. Then the number of people coming to an evening service will tell you what they think of the minister. Is he worth listening to twice? It's not as many on a Sunday night as there is on a Sunday morning. But then the number of people at the, the prayer meeting on a Wednesday night will tell you what they think of God. Corporate prayer must be a priority is the central message of these verses. Corporate prayer must be a priority. It is biblical. It is a pattern God has set for us as his people in this time, in this generation. And of course, there are a couple more things that I think are worthy of note here in this prayer. You're not getting off that easy. There's the obvious one. The prayer is primarily about God, about his greatness and his sovereignty. Read it through later on again yourself. Yes, they talk to God and bring their petitions to him as well. They talk about the situation they're facing with this increase in persecution. And they ask for help to speak God's message with boldness. But if you notice, the petition part of the prayer is only a very short bit. The prayer focuses on God as creator, on his word of promise and scripture to his people, on his sovereignty and power and all those things that we've already talked about. They acknowledge that everything Herod and Pilate, along with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, have done to Jesus was all in line with the plan that God had already decided would happen. Nothing is outside of God's plan. 
it's God and no one else, they say, has the power over the lives of people. And that's a real truth, isn't it? Right up to his own son, who he appointed as savior of the world. However important the authorities or the priests or the Sanhedrin thought they were here in this story, however important we think we are, and how well we can do things, well, we're no match for the sovereignty of God. God rules over all. So we have the priority in prayer. There's the priority of God in that prayer, and then the petition in the prayer. I think it's interesting here that that they essentially only ask for one thing. And it's not really what we'd expect. They don't really ask for an end to the problem. They don't ask God, will you stop this persecution? Will you stop us getting thrown in prison and beaten and so on? They don't come with a whole shopping list of requests for God. They just ask for boldness to keep doing what they've been called to do to proclaim the good news of the gospel to those around them. That is our primary purpose as God's people. I know we've looked at patterns for prayer before when we looked at the Lord's Prayer together some time ago. If you remember, Jesus didn't institute a particular prayer for his disciples. He didn't teach them or or want them to just repeat those particular words. He actually warned them about the dangers of repetitious prayer. But what he did teach was a pattern for prayer which we often follow. And acts that we're looking at is the acronym, isn't it? Adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. It's a good pattern to follow, to give our prayer some structure. But I think it's interesting here that the prayer is still quite simple and short. We all get scared by prayer, don't we? We all get filled into thinking that prayer is this complicated thing that, well, we need to use fancy words and so on that's almost reserved for those super Christians, those seasoned ones who know how to talk the talk. But it's not. That's not what we see here in Scripture. It doesn't have to be this great lengthy thing with lots of flowery words just to sound good to other people. That's not what we see here. I think this is a great pattern for talking to God in prayer. It's straightforward. It's simple. It's just talking to God. Quite a lot of this short prayer feels very and formal and natural, doesn't it? Like I said, it's just, just, just talking. And isn't that how it should be? We're talking to our Father in heaven who loves us and cares for us. We don't need complicated words. I know this sounds like a bit of an oxymoron, but I believe we can have this reverent or, or formal informality with God. Of course, we stand in awe and wonder that we can talk to this almighty creator of the heavens and the earth. But we talk to him like children. Children to a father who knows us better than we know ourselves. Formal, reverent, but yet this sense of informality and familial love. So we have the priority of prayer, the purpose of prayer, and then we see this wonderful connection. When we pray like this, acknowledging God, His greatness, and coming to Him and just talking to Him, we see the power of this prayer. We see the power of God working through His people. Remember what I said at the start? The disciples got because the disciples asked. And well, they prayed for boldness. And that's just what they got. Luke says that the whole place, yes, where they were meeting was shaken. And what? 
and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to proclaim God's message with boldness. Give us boldness, God. And God goes, well, there you are. Go and do your job. They got boldness because they asked for boldness. I think it reinforces what we've already said about Peter and John last time. There was that recognition that they were just simple, ordinary, unschooled men. But because they were in that close relationship with God, doing what God had asked them to do, God gave them the power and the ability to do it. It's the same as the writer of Hebrews reminds us, those who God calls, God equips. The disciples got because the disciples asked. What's his disciples asking for these days? Because, friends, we can, well, we need that same kind of passion and boldness in our world today, and we can have it if we ask for it. We can see and experience that same power working through us out into the world if we pray. And if we keep prayer our top priority, the opportunities are there to be grasped, friends. Surely, surely, as we look around our world and the society around us these days, we see the direction that that world has taken. The darkness and, and, and the complete godlessness in many cases. Do you not think it's time for God's people to step up to the mark and humble themselves in prayer and plead for a powerful movement of the Spirit of God to come and to heal our land? Friends, it is time to put corporate prayer at the top of our priority list. To allow the Spirit of God to work in us in our land, and in our pews. We, too, can be like these early disciples and speak with boldness and see people saved and become members of God's family. Will you pray with us? I'll see you on Wednesday night. But first, let's pray. Let's pray. And Father, as we look at your word, we know, well, we do, we know how often it speaks directly to us, it challenges us. Yes, your word brings us encouragement, but also the challenge. And we thank you for this encouragement that we see in this early church that as they, they made prayer their top priority, that amazing things happen. That they get that boldness that they asked for and people are saved. But yes, it highlights and challenges us too about where, where prayer is in our list of priorities. And yes, we confess we have our shopping lists of things to do what we need to do tomorrow or what we need to do today. And prayer and your word comes well down that list. But we see here that no matter what the situation, no matter how terrible the situation is, even incarceration in prison, the priority is to turn to you. So, Father, speak to us, enthuse us, draw us to that place of prayer that we too might see that powerful movement of your Spirit in our land today and we might turn this downward spiral that is happening in our society in these days. But yes, above all else, as we've recognized here too, you are that sovereign God. You have a plan and a purpose. So just use us for your purposes in this, our time, and our generation. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
I'm going to close with that wonderful old hymn. Um, well, chorus more than anything, but it all talks all about the Spirit being with us, the walking in the light, and, and helping us uh, in, in our walk together. So the Spirit lives to set us free. Walk, walk in the light. He binds us all in unity. Walk, walk in the light. Let's stand and let's worship God together. Anybody else want to clap their hands when that was? <laughs> Maybe it's just me. Let's just pray uh, as we close. Let, let, let's pray. Father, we do thank you for this time of worship, this time of fellowship together with each other and, and with you. And we pray that as we leave this meeting house, as we go across to the hall for a time of fellowship over a cup of tea, that you would uh, continue with us and we would know your continued blessing and continued fellowship amongst us. But as we part, we pray that, pray that the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit would go with each of us both now and forevermore. Amen.